Welcome to the Swimming From Home talk show. I'm here with Ryan Held. All right, let's clear one thing up. You were, I didn't even read the article, I just saw the headline. You were training at a yacht club. Get, give, me your, give me your side of what happened. Uh, well, we, so, you know, when, when the floors started falling out and everything was canceling, closing down, when the University of Alabama pool closed, mm -hmm. um, and this was, this was before or after the University of Alabama pool closed and then pre like announcement of the Olympic games being postponed and everything. Mm -hmm. And so for about a few days we were like, Oh man, we still need to train. Like we need to do all this. We like, cause you know, the games are still going to go on as, as scheduled. Right. So, um, we, uh, we were just like scrambling, searching for pools. There was, you know, a pool in Atlanta, um, a pool maybe in North Alabama, maybe South Alabama. And so we were, we we're kind of wondering like, uh, you know, okay, how are we going to get there? Are we going to get an Airbnb, da, 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 da. And uh, thankfully, um, Coley's wife found the Tuscaloosa Yacht Club. And they're like, they got a two lane pool. If you go there early in the morning, you know, like 5.30 to 7, you can swim before really any of the members get there. Um, mm -hmm. And just, you know, practice social distancing rules. And so we were doing that. We were doing, we were swimming two at a time and we'd probably, we were, you know, two guys, two girls. And we'd, we'd like get about maybe like 3,500 in, like not a whole lot, but yeah. you know, at that time, no one's really moving forward. Everyone's just trying to maintain where they were. Right. Um, and so we, we were just doing that. And then um, I told a local newspaper, like they're like, so they were asking me how I was training. And this was during that, that block of window, that block yeah. of time. Yeah. And um, then the article got published, like whatever, a couple of days later. And this was now like the article got published after the announcement of like the games being canceled and everything. Yeah. And uh, then the Swim Swim article came out and I felt bad because I, I was no longer training there. And I, I didn't want people like um, being mad at me for jeopardizing, you know, my health everyone else's health that I may come in contact with just for the sake of training. So that's yeah. why I felt like I had to uh, clarify that, that statement. Well, that's, but, that's very thoughtful of you. I think, you know, I think, um, I think that's important. Yeah. Um, so you were training, which I feel like there have been so many, so many new pools discovered throughout this process of people just like trying to get to a pool, you know, in some form, no matter what. Um, it's yeah, really interesting. To people hear. were we were contacting private pools. Like I had so many people message me. They're like, "Hey, like I've got a 15 yard pool from corner to corner. You know, it's not much, <laughs> but like yeah. if you want, it's you can you can come and um, use it." I was like, "Ah, uh, no, like thanks for thanks for the offer, but you know the the games are the games are postponed. Like so, there's there's nothing to really train for right now." Yeah. So so how did that initial um, announcement that the games were postponed, what was your reaction to that? I, I mean, leading up to that announcement, um, I had the belief that it was either all or none. It was either the games go exactly as planned mm -hmm. or there's no games at all. Um, okay. Just because the logistics of trying to, you know, postpone that all those events sure. it just seemed too just too much to handle yeah um, and so when they said it was going to be postponed not canceled i felt just this sense of relief like oh okay no like you know the work will accumulate in, into something you know there will be games it won't just be this kind of this dud mm -hmm. at the end of a uh, three years of work yeah um i mean that's yeah that has to be a good feeling and so what have you, what's, since that announcement, what's your day-to-day -day looked like? Um, so I'm back home in Springfield, Illinois. Okay. Um, and we've got, we've got a little miscellaneous um, workout machines, exercise, like cardio machines mm -hmm. um, in the basement. And then thankfully a local gym in the Springfield area has offered me um, a bar and some plates so I can do most lifts um, in my garage with no problem. Yeah. So it's kind of the perk of being from a small, smaller town. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. What has being home looked like for you so far? 
Um, I well, I haven't really left the house. Um, uh-huh. Just honestly, just kind of staying. Except, except I'll go for bike rides, bike rides around uh, um, on some of the bike trails around the town. Um, but other than that, just I don't know. It's kind of weird. It's it's like I'm like there's really nothing because when usually when I come home for like Thanksgiving or Christmas you know it's so jam-packed like I have to see family this time to this time I got to see high school friends from this time to this time like I gotta train from 3 30 to 5 at the Y and now it's just it's weird because like I just come home and just like just (laughs) just actually be home and then just hang out with the house um so that's it's it's actually kind of like nice it's a nice um blessing that way yeah definitely have what how have you spent your days you know are you have you read it all have you have you watched series have you you know there's bike rides do you bike a lot normally um yeah i would say biking is probably one of my next biggest passions after swimming um i love watching the tour de france uh, love road biking love mountain biking but there's not too much of that in Illinois. Um, but we do have some trails surrounding like the lakes and area. Um, but from day to day, um, just being home, um, just wake up, usually do about half hour to hour of cardio or whatever of that elliptical bike or not running, definitely not running. Um, <laughs> I was talking to, I think Kelsey Dahlia earlier, or someone, maybe it was Emily Escobedo, but she, she was like, swimmers don't run like it. And I was like, any swimmer who said they run in the past two weeks is a liar. Yeah, <laughs> no, I'm not running. I hate <laughs> just running. Is, no. Uh, and then, um, well, I've only been home for two days. So, okay. uh, and then I usually, well, I'll, I'll kind of do a hybrid of my days at Tuscaloosa and, here we're like post cancellation of everything and no training yeah. so um and then i'll do if i have home so i'm actually in post-grad at north carolina state for a gis certificate it's not a full degree but it's just a certificate so it's a little year and a half program okay and so i've been working on classwork that um we've been working on puzzles we got a movies puzzle just did a sports puzzle um, and then I've been grinding, uh, Breath of the Wild, uh, for Zelda on the Switch. Nice. So I've been playing a lot of, a lot of time on that. And then at night, um, been watching a lot of TV series, movies. So I've, we've been watching, we, we, I finished Don't Mess With Cats and I'm currently on episode three of Tiger King. So, Did and then, you kill uh, her husband? What? Do you think she killed her husband? Well, I don't know. I, I, we were right now. We just got to the episode. We're like, oh yeah. By the way, her husband has been missing. So like, we don't like we don't haven't gotten oh, the rest. Of the okay. Okay. Yet. Gotcha. Um, and we've also been watching uh, Thirty for Thirties, just because we we've got a lot of them. And we've, uh, I mean, it kind of fills the void of sports, <laughs> a sportless world. Right. Yeah. Do, have have is there a Thirty for Thirty that has been your favorite so far? Hmm. Well, I mean, I think a top favorite of mine is, is, uh, is bad boys is about the 1991, 1992 Detroit Pistons. Yeah. Um, and how they were just like, they were just thugs of playing basketball. They were so ruthless and mean playing basketball. <laughs> um, but another, some other good ones are, uh, well, one really interesting one is um, 9.78, I believe. It's about um, the 1982 Seoul um, Games. And the, the person who won the 100-meter dash, um, there was a Canadian guy, he, he won it. And then the next day, he tested positive for steroids. And so okay. then it was like, whoa, like, this this and this was like the first one of its time in the sports world was like whoa I can't believe people are cheating I can't believe this that and then the next the guy who the American <laughs> guy I'm drawing a blank on his name but he was really fast he got second uh huh and um he was like oh man I can't believe he cheated this is so unsportsmanlike 
And then like three months later, he was caught doping for the same steroid. And then, so then it was like, okay, you know, we need to change something about our, our doping policies and everything. Yeah. That, that's, that's also a really interesting, good one to watch. So do you know, okay, now I'm interested. Do you, do you know what, uh, what kind of like how often they were testing or how they were testing or anything, any, any kind of information on that? I think they just tested once right after the competition. That was it. And then, but like, so, but the people were saying, I was like, you know, you don't, you don't dope in a competition, you dope in practice like outside of the competition. And then, but like, and then like the guy, the Canadian, it was a Canadian sprinter who won and they were interviewing him and he was like, yeah, my honestly, like my coach would just hand me pills and I'd take them. Like I didn't question them. Uh, I just did it. Um, because I wanted to win. Oh, wow. Yeah. And now, you know, I, how often do you get drug tested? I get drug tested. Well, I mean, outside of meats, I probably get drug tested once every three months ish. Okay. Um, and then if I go to a pro swim, usually every pro swim series or every other pro swim series, I get tagged. Yeah. Um, but outside of swimming, about every three months. Yeah, gotcha. Man, that's crazy. Um, wow. So, so what have throughout this entire process of kind of you know the COVID nineteen things getting shut down, normalcy being flipped on its head? Um, yeah. Have you been able to find any sort of routine in your day to day? Yeah. Now, now that I'm home. Um, home, home. I've yeah. had, I've had definitely routine. Um, my parents and I have tried to have like one project a day. Mm-hmm. So we're, you know, whether that's cleaning out kind of, uh, the storage room in the basement or fixing this, fixing, um, a clogged sink or something right now, our project is we're actually making a box jump in the garage. Oh, nice. So we're, we're doing something like that. Like tomorrow we'll probably have to mow and, do some of the lawn. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, we're just trying to have a project to stay just busy. And then like, just so we're not wasting the the day away. Yeah. Do you have siblings that are home or abroad? Um, I have one brother and he is currently, um, a doctor in the Charlotte area. Oh, okay. And he, um, he, he says it's, it's kind of somewhat bad and, or he says it's, well, cause he's kind of on the front lines of everything. And so he gets to see kind of the, the ugly truth of it. And he was like, yeah, you know, it's, it is a little scary. Like piece of, people I like personally know have gotten coronavirus now. And, uh, um, but he's, uh, he's, he's still doing kind of his normal, he's, he's not like a emergency doctor or medicine doctor. He's a physical medicine rehab doctor. Okay. So he does a lot of like, post-operation stuff um not really like life or threatening uh kind of life on the line medicine um so he, he's still kind of doing some of that stuff right now but he says the hospital is is getting a little uh full to uh with ventilators and everything they're kind of reaching a crisis state yeah wow that's that's pretty crazy um yeah I mean, so through this process have, you know, has it made you take a step back, especially with the games postponed and just kind of seeing swimming in a different light? It definitely has. Yeah. Cause it's, you know, for, you know, for the past, whatever, six months of this year in training, um, pretty much since September was like swimming was job. Got to do this. Got to do that. Right. Got to do this. Got to do that. Got to do that. And it was, it was now, um, it was kind of lo- like, uh, I was, I wasn't looking at swimming as like just something I did for fun. Um, yeah. it was, it was the job of part of swimming. Like you got to do this, got to do that. And now without swimming, like, uh, like it's kind of true that statement of like, you don't know what you have until it's gone. And now without swimming, it was like, oh man, like what I wouldn't do just to, just to do like a 3000, just to hop in a pool and just sprint. Um, so, but it, it has, it, it definitely opened up my eyes and it's, it's definitely been nice to just to come home and not train, not swim, 
um, and just be home and um, just spend time with a family. And, um, and, and it's, I think it's, I think hopefully this, this whole thing will have like a long-term like family structure, um, positive impact that people are actually going home and spending time with their parents instead of, and like, since there's literally nothing to do, they can't, they can't go out and escape to, I don't know, somewhere else. Like they have to spend time with their parents. So hopefully this will kind of increase a uh, family bonding in some families. Yeah, certainly. I mean, do, uh, do, or were puzzles things that you guys normally do, or is that something you've picked up because of this? Um, well, we've had, we've had puzzles for various occasions. Um, so we had, we had puzzles lying around. Um, but now and it's kind of like for situations like this, when there's literally nothing to do. So we do puzzles, like when, if there was a tornado warning and we have to go to the basement or something, um, mm-hmm. if we like lost power or, um, when I broke my leg playing indoor soccer in seventh grade, we did puzzles cause like just nothing to do. Yeah. Nice. So just keep entertained. Yeah, certainly. Um, are have have you been in so since because the olympics are now a year back um you know i don't i don't know if that's changed your long-term goals at all but in terms of like day-to-day goals has this kind of approach has this changed the way you approach goal setting more of like on the day-to-day mm. No, because I think, I think everyone, I I don't think like the day to day, the day to day goals now is just like, make sure I work out, um, you know, do a little cardio, do a little strength. Um, but not like, it doesn't have to be crazy. Like I'm not lifting crazy heavy or, you know, pushing myself to like VO2 max on cardio. Just, just, just staying active, getting my heart rate up. Um, just moving. That's pretty much the the day to day goal. Um, and I, but I think, once the swimming world starts back up, I think it's just going to be, you know, kind of right where we left off of, you know, um, of the, I mean, the goals haven't changed. The long-term goals have definitely not changed. Um, obviously. So. Yeah. Do you, do you think you will be just as, you know, like a lot of people say, you know, everyone was kind of geared up for that Olympic year and now it's like, okay, there's like a whole nother Olympic year. Do you think you'll be yeah. just as motivated going into that? See, yeah, that's, I think that's going to be tough for a lot of people. Yeah. Um, because I think a lot of people, well, I, I think people get so like just mentally focused and just like mentally strain themselves that like everything has to be perfect, everything. And like they, and like after a year, you know, it's, it's tough to keep up that, that mental integrity, that, that, I don't know, that, that, that drive to, to be perfect and to do a whole for a second year. It's like, Oh man, you know, that's, it's tough. And I think it is going to be um, effect on some people, but I think also it's going to be, I mean, I, I think that's going to be a problem, but I think the bigger problem is just going to be people like Madison Cox, you know, who had plans for 2021 and um, even one of my team college teammates, Anton Ibsen, he was going to go into post-grad. He got a year off um, to train back in Denmark. And he's like, no, now what do you do? Do you got, you ask for a second year? Do you, you know, do you uh, like quit your passion? Like, what, what do you do? It's tough. I think that's going to be the bigger issue for a lot of swimmers. Yeah. Is, is that an issue for you? No, it's not an issue for me because I was still, um, I was, I'm still in school. So I at least I had like, I had until at least December to be, um, somewhere or like school wise. So like, it's not like I could get a job while I was in school, getting for a certificate. So I had at least till December and I, and I was planning on doing ISL season two world cups. I was planning on swimming, um, that time anyways. So it, it wasn't honestly a big deal for me. Um, but it's just now just going to be a little weird because that was going to be like a fun year. Yeah. Um, I was going to do all these, these fun meets, these, I don't know, go all over these places, but now it's going to be like, nope. Okay. I guess I got to focus in and be lasered in again. Yeah. Which 
Yeah, I mean, that's... It, it kind of has its pros and cons. Yeah, certainly. Um, are you able to... Do you still keep in contact with a lot of your teammates? Uh, Alabama teammates or yeah. USA teammates or... Either, either, you know, have you, have you talked to other swimmers during kind of this period wherever you Oh, yeah. So yeah. Um, for a while, like, I was, I was talking to Blake Peroni, Will Lacone, like, every day. Um, we were like, what, what, what are your thoughts? What are your, what are your thoughts on this? What are you going to do? What are you, what are your plans? Like, you still have a pool? Like, oh, maybe keep that in the back of my mind. And then, yeah, I was talking with um, Braden Holloway. Um, Justin Russ and Coleman Stewart and so we were it's like they were talking about their pool was still open in Raleigh for a bit and so um, if I had to go back I could go back Um, but you know we've been having these national team meetings like every Friday or so and it's kind of it's kind of it's kind of helpful it's oddly like comforting to know that everyone's in the same situation yeah no one no one's really ahead or whatever like but everyone's just kind of like we don't have a pool so i think well you you just don't feel like you're being left behind yeah certainly um yeah i mean i'm you know for every swimmer the pool is such a comfort in many cases and so Mm -hmm. i'm you know (laughs) that one thing being taken away it it, uh, it's nice that at least everyone's in the same boat on that one yeah 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 um well cool man any any closing thoughts you've got i would just say just i don't know just relax be um don't worry about training don't worry about anything well i mean don't worry about don't, I mean, don't worry about like athletic wise yeah um make sure you're practicing social distancing good health health techniques good hand washing um just stay safe yeah push fluids always push fluids <laughs> always yeah. um well awesome thanks a lot for your time ryan yeah no thank you thank you